OK. The concept of observers are clearly important in physics because physics try to explain the result of observations we make. And there are two different, though related, concepts often referred to as an observer. The first is actually better called reference frame, like what description we adopt to, um, to describe physics. The other is real physical observer, like, a, the, like us, we're making measurement and do the information processing and compare and do the experiments. And to understand cosmology at the deepest level, we really understand both of these concepts, and that's what I will uh, talk about now. So first, observer as a reference frame. Even in a Galilei time, it's old days, and we knew that the description of the same physics differ if you change the reference frame. Suppose you talk about an uh, object which is moving at the speed of 30 km per hour, but you're describing the same object from the frame which is moving at the 20 km per hour compared with the original frame, then that object looked like moving at the speed of 50 km per hour. Okay? The velocity of that object changed, but the truth is single. Okay? But we learned that in, in relativity that if you change the reference frame in a relativistic world, namely the speed of light is not negligible, then even the same physics can be described much more dramatically different ways. For example, if you have some object and you move with respect to the original frame, then the same object looks shorter. Uh, similarly, the time progress differently. Okay? This is a major effect of uh, uh, special relativity. And we're learning in the past decades or so that if you think about effect of quantum gravity, this relativeness of description becomes even more uh, dramatic. Suppose you describe a black hole and, and then dropping some object into the black hole. And then it looks like this object is approaching into black hole, something called horizon, the boundary of black hole. And then later, that information is completely stored in the black hole, and then black hole evaporates. And those final outcome of the black hole evaporation called Hawking radiation contains the whole information about the initial object you dropped. OK, that's it. But on the other hand, the theory of general relativity tells us that if you're falling with this book, then the whole book will be inside the black hole. And what's going on? You may think that the information of the initial book will be outside as a Hawking radiation, as I explained the earlier. Or maybe book is inside because you can fall with the book. But the theorem of quantum mechanics suggests that the same information cannot completely be copied. This is hard to explain, but th that's the theorem. So the information cannot both be outside and the inside at the late time. Cannot both be true, so what's going on? What we think right now is that these are actually not inconsistent. If you try to describe the process from exterior reference frame called external observer, and then the book information will be absorbed into the horizon and later come back as a radiation. That's it, purely. Okay? Because you're describing things from exterior, nothing else. But if you're falling with the book, then interior space-time shows up, but then you cannot access the radiation which will be emitted from the black hole because you're falling already inside the black hole. That's it. So the point that is you cannot both be distant observer and falling observer at the same time. It's either. So if you describe in either way, then the description of physics looks quite different. And what you learn here is that even concept of space-time may be observer or difference frame dependent. Because if you choose distant difference frame, you should regard inside of the black hole non-existent. Because otherwise, information is copied. Okay? You have in, uh, information in radiation, and book will be inside of copies. No, interior does not exist. And if you're falling into the black hole, then you should regard that the part of the outside space-time does not exist, because you already have a book inside. You should not be able to access Hawking radiation. Those pictures were uh, developed in the past decades. So then, next concept of uh, observer. Well, that's the kind of reference frame. Although I call it observers, we are actually talking about the reference frame. But quantum mechanics forces us to consider real observer, physical observer like us. Why? Because in quantum mechanics, the state of the system is in general something called superposition of a probabilistic outcome. So some of the states is whatever up and some possibilities down. These two possibilities both coexist in something called quantum states. And if you make an observation, and it will be chosen, one will be chosen. That's how quantum mechanics is formulated. And we now think that this formulation is effective 
at least some of the physicists think uh, this is effective. So what's happening actually is that you are also part of the system. So if you interact with this probabilistic superposition thing, and you also will become a superposition thing, because you interact with, with the superposition thing, so you will become superposition world of something, the world with up state and world with down states, whatever that means. So you will branching into different universes. But then you really have to talk about precisely what this uh, measurement or interaction or branching process means at the really fundamental level and how these different classical worlds show up from this process. And in fact, these two concepts of observers become really important if you try to understand uh, universes at the fundamental level, cosmology at the fundamental level. Recently, we start developing the idea that what we thought as the entire universe may be one of the many, many universes called bubble universes in a bigger entity called the multiverse. Uh, this picture developed based on a lot of theoretical consideration and also motivated by uh, experimental fact that the acceleration of our universe is accelerating, uh, expansion of our universe is accelerating. And if you take this literally the picture that the universe is born infinitely many times in infinite space, then we hit the problem. Because in infinite space, any measurement can be repeated infinitely many times. And if its uh, result is infinitely many times, suppose you want to compute the probability of some event A happens, some event B happens, both are happening infinite times. Well, then, of course, the ratio of the number of times is just infinity over infinity. That is not defined and theoretically accessible. But the concept of observers I explain in quantum gravity and quantum mechanics seems to solve this problem in a dramatic way. So suppose this is a, like a pictorial description of the multiverse in certain a diagrammatic way. You don't need to know the detail. But then this is a, like a cool, uh, complicated multiverse. And then if you're a neural physical observer represented by these red lines, the space-time region you can really see, even in principle, corresponding to this inside, this uh, triangle su uh, surrounded by these red lines. Okay? So the outside region you cannot, in principle, access, like interior of the black hole as viewed from external observers. If you cannot, in principle, ac access that region in that particular description, then we learn that you should not include this. Otherwise, copying of informa quantum information prohibited by the theorem will happen. So you should regard this region, actually, is non-existent. So what exists for you is like this, only this region. Then this is not the multiverse. It's not like infinite space and so on, which we thought exist from uh, a different theoretical argument. So what happens to the multiverse? In fact, what's going on is that, yes, for one observer or one reference frame, this region outside this triangle doesn't exist. But for the other observer, the other region doesn't exist, and other region exists. And for other observer, other region exists, and other region doesn't exist. And you can have all these things. You can combine these pictures as viewed from different, different frames to a single picture. And that's what we call the multiverse. So all these spaces we thought exist in infinite space exist only in a probabilistic sense in quantum mechanics. And that leads to the second concept of observer because it's now quantum mechanics. You really have to think about how this picture shows up, shows up when physical observers make measurement. So at this point, the state of the, of the multiverse or entire cosmos, because we are talking about cosmology, is a probabilistic superposition of different possibilities. And each possibility describes only the region in which you can, in principle, access, namely inside this triangle. Okay? But we still need a prescription to extract the physical observation, namely, if physical observer make a measurement, then what outcome you will get? You have to extract these things from something called quantum states at this point. And that is not precisely understood. So this is something very important thing you really have to work on if you try to understand cosmology at the deepest level. And we don't, as I said, we don't really know the, what the fundamental, uh, uh, fundamentally this mechanism works, but one possibility that is that uh, entire system may actually be a finite system, and all these observations may be happening internally as something called information amplification process, and that may really be the key to understand cosmology or quantum gravity. But in any case, the issue of the observer seems to be extremely important to really do the cosmology at the fundamental level, and that's because of quantum mechanics. 